Hi, my name is Sue Klain. I'm an ocean-inspired artist based out of Palm City, Florida. I work primarily in acrylic and resin, although I'm trained in watercolor and oil and even sculpture. I have a bachelor's degree in fine art with a major in graphic design. I worked in the design field for several years as an art director at a local ad agency. And I think I take a little bit of my design background and carry that into my painting. Currently I've been painting pretty much nonstop for about eight years or so for my business Sue Klain Custom Artwork. I love painting the ocean. I adore the color blue. For me, my art is about the process. The process affords me a sense of calm and serenity. There's a bit of prep that goes into creating this. The back of the canvas needs to be taped to catch the drips, otherwise you'll have solid plastic bumps across the back. And you need to support the back as well because canvas has some flex. And then I have this level here. It's very important to make sure that everything is in place prior to pouring. I have special air purifiers in my studio to handle chemicals. There's a lot of protective gear that's necessary to wear to keep yourself safe. So the resin that I use has um, very uh, low VOCs, which means volatile chemicals. Also has really high, strong properties for UV protection because all resin eventually will yellow, especially if it's kept in the sun. And I try to use as many um, devices that can be reused to eliminate some waste. But when you're mixing resin, it is really important to measure exactly. I have to stir the resin for three minutes. Some artists will actually tint their resin with colors, which I do have a lot of really beautiful resin tints. I don't always use um, resin colorant because I um, do like to start by hand painting my canvas. So I feel that it gives me a little bit more control as an artist and makes it a little more um, interesting. And sometimes for the sand, I might use um, different textured mediums like a crackle paste or a medium that has a little texture like sand, just to add some interest. Now I'm gonna mix some white resin for my sea foam. And you only wanna put no more than 10% of the pigment into the volume. If you put too much, it won't set up properly. It's best to let the resin thicken up a little bit rather than just sliding off the canvas. It gets a little thicker and you have a little better chance of controlling it. So I'm gonna let that sit for 15 minutes. This piece is multi-levels of resin. The base of this, this is actually created on wood panel. So the base is all hand painted and then a coat of resin is put on and then I would paint one stingray, then another coat of resin, another stingray, another coat of resin, another stingray. And it creates a three-dimensional look, like flying above. The base of this is hand painted with a variety of techniques, coat of resin, then part of the shark would be painted, another coat of resin. After the resin is dry, another part of the shark is painted. And in the end, this, is, this could be five, six, seven layers of resin. Um, it's a lot of fun, it's challenging. It's a medium that's uncontrollable that you try to control. Sometimes it's frustrating. You can go to bed at night having your perfect sea foam in the exact place that you want and you wake up because the resin self levels, it moves. So, you know, the saying you go with the flow, it really applies to this medium. The next step is after waiting 15 minutes for the resin to sort of set up a little bit, is to actually start pouring it on the canvas. And this is just going to be the first of probably many coats of resin, depending on the effect that I'm trying to achieve. Each brand of resin has its own workable time. So this particular brand has an hour. After an hour, it's going to start to set up and I, I need to be done. This resin forms air bubbles as it starts to do its thing and cure on the canvas and the way to get rid of those is to use a torch. And you need to make sure that you don't get too close to the piece because you can actually scorch the resin. And so as you torch it, the bubbles just continue to rise to the surface so you need to just keep, keep going. So once in a while you'll see like a little flaw which might be a speck of dust or something that fell off the torch and I have toothpicks. So if you don't get rid of all these air bubbles it will cure with like uh, little dimples in it. Which isn't the end of the world because I would just do a light sanding and do another coat. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the white that I mixed up earlier to 
to create the sea foam. So now I'm gonna to torch that. You can see the large bubbles in the white. As soon as I torch it, they may disappear. Kind of go back in as more bubbles start to arise as you go. So next, in, in order to make this foam move and create the chemical reaction between the colored resin and the clear resin, I use a heat gun. And I go back in again with the torch, which causes more of a reaction. So this will be the ultimate first layer, but I am going to add another little swirl of white up in the top for this first layer, because I have some white left and why not? Here you can see these tiny little cells that are forming as it sits and as the heat creates the chemical reaction. I either cover it with these pans sometimes or depending on the size of the piece, I cover it with this. So while it cures, this prevents anything from falling from the air conditioning or hair or whatever and it gives it a chance to dry in a more pristine environment. Another extension of my creativity is my garden. I love to plant flowers, I love to attract butterflies, I love to attract birds, I love to grow my own vegetables. I feel like everybody has a creative side to them and that's just an extension to my creativity. I am a member of Martin Artisans Guild. I frequently show my work out of the Palm Room Art Gallery in Sewell's Point. You can also view my work at SueClaneCustomArtwork.com and I do hope that you will join me at the Open Studio Tour this year.